Hi there, welcome. I'm Dr. Dan Newsom, and I'm here to bring you optimal health naturally. Today's subject is the immune system, which is such a complex subject. So we're gonna cover the topic, how does the immune system interact with the other systems of the body? Let's go talk about it. Okay, so in order to answer that question, we have to cover what are the functional components of the immune system. Okay, and I'm gonna start someplace where you may not suspect. I'm gonna start with your skin. Your skin is part of your immune system. It is a barrier, okay? It keeps bugs and toxins and things like that out, while at the same time, keeping blood and lymphatic fluid and you know organs and things like that inside the body, okay? So it's a, a barrier. Our skin is a barrier. Our skin also produces an antimicrobial chemical that keeps things from burrowing into it and eating it, okay? Uh, it also produces sweat, which washes things away from our skin. Next, we have uh, mucous membranes, okay? Mucous membranes that line our ears, our nose, our throat, the inside of our eyes, our, our whole respiratory system, our whole digestive system, even our urinary tract and reproductive system is lined by mucous membranes. And mucous membranes act also as a barrier, okay? They produce mucus, and that mucus is a very sticky, gummy, gooey substance, right? That globs up and binds to uh, dust, mold, viruses, bacteria, fungus, parasite cyst eggs, okay? Heavy metals, all these crazy things get bound up in that mucus. It's very sticky, right? And it sticks to things and globs them up to prevent their entry into our system. So they act as a component of our immune system. Next, we have our digestive system. Okay, our digestive system is also lined with this mucous membrane, right? And uh, interesting enough, it has a, a secondary organ that lives on that mucous membrane. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. But in the, uh, in the digestive system, there's a component, a lymphatic tissue that's in our digestive system called the Peer's patches. And Peer's patches are where our immune cells, our white blood cells, go in our, immune, in our, our gut to learn what's going on in the gut. Okay, they actually have access to gut contents, okay? They have access to all the bugs, all the toxins, all the food, everything that's going through the digestive tract. These things are in the, uh, these Paris patches are in the small intestine and those lymph tissues are uh, where the, the white blood cells actually can contact and be in contact with the contents in our gut, inside our digestive system. Uh, now, why don't you come with me, let's go talk about that other organ that I was talking about. Okay, so what is this organ that I keep talking about, right? Well, in the modern research, okay, today many scientists, many doctors, including myself, consider what is called the microbiome to be its own separate organ. Okay, and so what's a microbiome, right? Well, the microbiome, the gut microbiome is what I'm talking about, okay? The gut microbiome is the layer of bacteria and microbes that line our entire digestive system. Okay, and it changes. You know, it's different in our mouth than it is in our stomach. It's different in our stomach than it is in our small intestine. It's different in our small intestine than it is in our colon. But in each of these compartments, there is a lining of microorganisms on those mucous membranes of the digestive tract that is called the microbiome, the gut microbiome. Okay, and again, many scientists, doctors, and myself included, consider this to be its own organ, okay? And it's just as important as any other organ in the body. 
as the microbiome goes from the, the you know, because of the digestive st tract starts in the mouth, we get into the stomach, we get in the small intestine. In that small intestine, remember, remember we just talked about the pears patches. Okay, those pears patches are where the white blood cells go into the digestive tract and learn or are trained. I, I equate it to the white blood cells going to uh, going to basic training. Okay, they're an army, and the gut is where they go to basic training. It's in those pears patches in the small intestine. If the gut microbiome is in disaster because you've had viral infections, because you've had parasites, because you've had uh, a diet of processed foods with lots of preservatives and things like that, or if you've been on multiple rounds of antibiotics or antifungals or any of those types of things, those things leave your microbiome in disarray. So when we're missing different components in that microbiome, our gut cannot be healthy. We can't have a healthy gut if we have a disrupted microbiome. If we have a disrupted microbiome, we don't have a healthy gut. If we don't have a healthy gut, then basic training gets disrupted in those peers patches, okay? Basic training of our white blood cells gets disrupted in our gut, and our white blood cells don't get trained properly, okay? So this is extremely, extremely important. Uh, to our entire immune system, the development of our immune system, okay? But there's a whole nother component to this. this. This layer of microbes on our digestive tract communicate with our immune system. They communicate with our white blood cells, giving them intel, okay? Giving them intelligence as to what's going on in the gut. What are, what are, they being, what are the microbes in the gut being poisoned by? What, are, uh, what kind of nutrition is coming through the gut, whether they're getting good nutrition, bad nutrition, no nutrition, okay? All that information gets sent back to the immune system. Um, if they're being attacked, okay, if the microbiome is being attacked by some other, by a parasite, by other bacteria, by other fungus, or by viruses, all of that information is being sent back to our white blood cells and our white blood cells are collecting all that information from the microbes, the, the, the bacteria in our gut. Okay, it's super, super, super important. Interesting enough, we have a microbiome in our respiratory system. Okay, it lines that mucous membrane in our respiratory system. We have a microbiome on our skin. We have a microbiome in our uh, urinary reproductive tract. Okay, in all of those microbiomes in our body are dependent on the health of our gut microbiome. So if you have an unhealthy gut microbiome, it only stands to reason that before too long, you're gonna have an unhealthy respiratory microbiome or unhealthy urinary tract or unhealthy skin, okay? Because all of the microbes that we need in our respiratory system, our skin, and our urinary tract come from our gut microbiome. So our gut microbiome is a super, super important component in our, uh, in our overall immune function, in the development of our immune system. So that is why so many of us uh, doctors and scientists consider the microbiome to be its own organ. Oh, all right, so let's cover the last couple components of the immune system. First off, we have the lymphatic system. Okay, now our lymphatic system is, is probably one of the most misunderstood systems in our body in medicine. Okay, what our lymphatic system does is it drains all of the toxins away from our organs, like our brain, our heart, our bones, our joints, okay, our muscles, okay, uh, all these tissues produce toxins. They metabolize, okay, as they metabolize, they produce waste. All that waste has to leave and be drained away by some mechanism, correct? Well, the lymphatic system is that mechanism. And throughout the lymphatic system, we have, we have all kinds of different tissues. We have a spleen, right? Uh, we have a thymus. We have, <laughs> you've probably heard of adenoids and tonsils, right? 
Uh, those are things people hear about quite often, right? Uh, we have uh, lymph nodes. We have hundreds of lymph nodes all around our body. And what these lymph nodes are is they are little filters. Okay, remember the, the, the fluid, there's fluid flowing through the lymphatic system. That's how it moves these toxins from our, our, our tissues, okay? It carries those toxins away via lymphatic fluid. That fluid flows off to the lymph nodes, and the lymph nodes act as, in essence, little kidneys, okay? Filtering out all the waste and toxins from, those, uh, from that fluid, right? Lymph nodes have a second thing that they do. They act as a, uh, like a command center for your white blood cells. So your white blood cells will travel back to lymph nodes and they will get the latest intel on the enemy and then go back out and fight the enemy. Okay, so that's, that's our lymphatic system. Now this brings us to white blood cells. Okay, so our white blood cells are really cool. They are an army. Okay, and they are our defenders. They protect us. Okay, they protect us against infection. They protect us against toxicity. There's all kinds of things that our white blood cells do. We have white blood cells that devour. They actually eat and they engulf and devour the bad guys or intruders or even toxins. Um, and they will, they, they literally digest them with pancreatic enzymes. It's real interesting. They have enzymes in, in these white blood cells that digest whoever they're trying to fight, okay, whoever they're up against. We have other white blood cells that will produce inflammatory responses so that our white blood cells can, our other white blood cells that are either tagging the bad guys, which we'll talk about in a minute, or the ones that come in to eat the bad guys, okay, uh, they have to be able to move around in our injured tissue or our infected tissue effectively in order to get all the bacteria or fungus or viruses or whatever is in our tissue. They've got to be able to move around in the tissue. So there's cells in our immune system that will produce an inflammatory response like basophils, eosinophils, mast cells. Okay, You've probably you may have heard of these before. Okay, They all help produce these necessary inflammatory responses to the immune system being irritated or our body being infected. And that is so these other white blood cells can get in and move around and do what they're supposed to do. We also have, we have a, a whole group of scouts in our, our immune system military. And those scouts are our T cells and B cells, our lymphocytes, okay? And they're the ones that produce the infamous uh, antibodies, okay, those antibodies. Everyone's heard about antibodies, right? Well, it's these two types of white blood cells that go around producing these antibodies, and then they tag the bad guys for the other ones like monocytes and macrophages and neutrophils that come along, and they are the ones that then devour the bad guys. Um, those particular white blood cells that devour the bad guys are so aggressive that they have to be guided, okay? And the lymphocytes are there to guide these aggressive fighters, okay? So they tag, they direct them to where they need to go fight. I've been studying this for a long time and I always find it absolutely fascinating how all these little components in our bodies can work together in harmony to keep us alive every day. Isn't our body amazing? Well, the immune system is a big subject, and I hope that this kind of showed you all the different components of your immune system and how they work together to keep you healthy. If you're looking for more information on your immune system or how to bolster your immune system and support your health, take a look at our website. Until then, I'll see you soon. God bless. 